I, Chuck, I got another explainer for you. Oh, well, I'm here to get it. Yeah, yeah. There's no end to these, I don't think. That's cool. Well, no, the, the, I, I will run out. At one point, my brain will be empty, and I'll just be this, this vessel right. that a, used to have stuff in it. A hollow but shell? It's, it's, <laughs> a hollow shell. A and it's all online at that point. I'll need to do some one of these one of these uh, consciousness uploads nice. to get my brain back from everything I put on online. But uh, I have to address something that I think we've seen in the news. You know, every six months goes by, and then you see a headline: "Oh, uh, uh, astrophysicists have to rethink the Big Bang," or "Big Bang is debunked," or "Or did you uh, did you see any of these at any time?" Oh my God! They're, but uh, well, recently the James Webb Space Telescope supposedly the headline is. Um, did the James Wells, Webb's telescope um, make scientists think the, rig, the Big Bang? Or has the James mm -hmm. Webb telescope debunked the Big Bang? Yeah, it makes excellent clickbait. Yeah. There it is. It's, it's clickbait headlines. So let me just explain a few things that's going on here, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, on the frontier of scientific research, it is a bloody place, mm. all right? Ideas are slaves. Two scientists enter. One <laughs> scientist leaves. <laughs> it's the octagon. <laughs> Welcome to Science Dome. <laughs> <laughs> On the frontier, ideas are contested daily. Right. And most ideas turn out to be wrong. All right. So so what you are as a scientist working on the frontier, you, you're in this idea factory. That's what you are. And the successful idea is not the one that's argued most strenuously or argued by the most articulate. Yeah, that's called politics. That's called politics. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, it's not, it has nothing to do with either of those. It has to do with evidence. All right, which idea is supported by evidence? So typically what happens is you can test your ideas, and here's where you have to be convincing. You have to say, I, I think my idea is better than your idea, and here's a way to test it. Right. So I, ha I have an idea. So if you don't like me, the way you show it is you design an experiment to show I'm wrong. Ooh, okay. Oh, that's some cutthroat, nasty stuff that's some right there. It's, oh, it's, it's some nasty. Ooh, All right. That's some so real housewives you... stuff. <laughs> Not real housewives. <laughs> 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 Let me tell you something, I, I, Phaedra. Your hypothesis <laughs> is trash. <laughs> trash. <laughs> so, so scientists can test their ideas. So you, uh, you don't like me, and you're going to show me that I'm wrong. And so you go home and you invent an experiment. You invent an experiment to test my idea with the objective of showing that I'm wrong. And it turns out, hey, wait a minute. I'm getting what the dude says. Right. You got to publish that, I'm picking up and then what someone else performs a p p p p performs another kind of experiment aimed at testing the same hypothesis, and they get kind of the same result. And then someone from a different country with a different wall current, two hundred forty volts maybe, and they plug their stuff in, and they're getting the same result. When you have repeated experiments verifying an idea, we have a new objective truth that has emerged in those sciences. And what I'm telling you is that the Big Bang Theory, mm -hmm. by the way, if you type that into Google, you get the TV show. Just I, I'm, My personal jury is still out on whether that's a good or bad thing. Um, you know, it doesn't mean, like, science is so popular, it's a TV show, and that's the first thing you hit, because you got to get through that. Then there's the Big Bang is a K-pop group. You got to get through that. Then you get to the origin of the universe. Okay, wow. in the Google search. Just thought I'd point that out. Well, to it's you. good to know that we Google in order of importance. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Just saying. Wow. All right. So, so here's the point: the tenets of the Big Bang, that the universe started out small, hot, dense, uh, where matter and energy were a primordial soup where the forces of nature had merged, all of that is thoroughly supported by observations of this universe. Thoroughly supported. 
Okay, now there's some things that, well, did this really cause that or might it be something that we don't know about yet? And who ordered up the dark matter? We don't know where that came from. And where's this expansion? We don't know where that came from, but we can describe it and we can measure it. Here's the point. If tomorrow you have a new idea about how the universe works, it's going to enclose everything we've been talking about up to that moment that has been experimentally and observationally verified. You can enclose it in something deeper. Okay, you can say, oh, wait, I have an idea. Our universe is just one in a multiverse. Right. Fine, okay? But our universe would have started with a big bang, okay? Right. And our universe would have expanded from a dense, hot cool, uh, state and has been cooling ever since. That's observed and that's real and that's not going away. That's my point. So, so what you have are journalists trying to make clickbait and if there's some little thing in the early universe that is still on the frontier, still being contested in the octagon, in the, in the, in the fight dome, and, and, and some new idea is emerging over another idea, people say, oh, Big Bang is in trouble. Scientists go back to the drawing. But Big Bang is not in trouble. Right. I'm just saying, it's not in trouble. It is a whole thing that could conceivably fit in a deeper, bigger idea. But it's not going to be swapped out tomorrow. We're not going to find out tomorrow. Gee, uh, the, the, the early universe was cold instead of hot. That is not going to happen. That's not how science works. So if you're going to come up with something new, <clears throat> you're not coming up with something that will change the old. All you have to the, the, the old that has old been that experimentally has been verified. That's done. Right. If you're going to come up with some, something new about the Earth and the Sun, it's not going to be well. It's really Earth is stationary and the exactly. sun moves right. around the Earth and the sun is cold and Earth is hot and Earth is what's illuminating the, the moon. Right. That is not going to happen. Right. 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 Okay? You can't just pull an idea out of your orifice and ignore experimental verification of what's going on. Right. So you might, you might come up with the big fang, but you're not changing the big bang. <laughs> Well, what's the big thing? I get a thang? C plus on that one. Yeah, it's, a, it's, what came, it's what came before the big thing. We call it the big thing. The big thing. <laughs> okay, that's a B plus. If that's yeah. <laughs> what's your thing? Yeah, that's before the big bang. Yeah, it was before the big bang. <laughs> so, and and by the way, the when we think of Einsteinian physics, so it's relativity, which completely. Uh, usurped Newtonian gravity and Newtonian motion, all right? What we call cla the era of classical physics, which led right up to the late 1800s, Newton's ideas reigned supreme, all right? And uh, he told you what gravity did, what motion did, and acceleration in a pre-existing space, and it was working, okay? It was working. And then people said, well, wait a minute. Uh, the orbit of Mercury is not really following Newton's laws. And we said, oh, we got this. We, we know, we got this. There's, a, there's another planet you can't see that's tugging on it. We even had a name for that planet. It was called Vulcan, okay? Huh? We, a hypothetical planet tugging on Mercury so that we didn't have to throw out Newton's laws, all right? So that was invoked just out of, we just pulled that out of our ass, right? Said, there it is, we'll find it one day. Einstein comes along with a special theory of relativity and then his general theory of relativity. And what we find is that at high gravity, like near the sun, and at high speeds, at high gravity and high speeds, Newton's laws completely fail. You cannot use them at all. So do we say, did we throw away Newton? No, we didn't. You know why? Because if you take Einstein's equations and plug in low speeds and low gravity, they become Newton's equations. Uh -huh. Yes. So Einstein basically enclosed Newton's ideas as a special low speed, low gravity case of a much larger, deeper understanding of the universe. That is fantastic. It's, it's, it, is, it, is, it is beautiful. Yeah. It is. And so, so, and by the way, Newton's, uh, Newton's, 
uh, gravity and Newton's motion were just fine for the Apollo project. Right. We got to the That's moon and back right. without any Einstein relativity at all. Okay. So it's only if you really uh, um, up the stakes in your gravity. There's no under way to understand black holes, really, with, uh, or even the Big Bang itself with just Newtonian physics. Point is, new physics does not undo experimentally verified physics. Right. That's the whole point of experimental verification. That's all. Look at that. And so the Big Bang is just fine. You want to do something else with it? Take it body and soul and stick it in some other theory you have. But you can't undo what the experiments and observations have shown. And that is an explainer for you. There you go. Wow. That is good. Take that, Big, big Bang deniers. Take that. <laughs> Um, so that's that's an explainer from the octagon, <laughs> from, the, <laughs> from the scientist fight club. There it is, science, it. science fight club. I love it. All right, so we got to end it there, Chuck. All Always right. good to have you. Always a pleasure. All right, Neil deGrasse Tyson here, four star. Club. Keep looking up.